Today I am going to explain a German comedy film called, Suck Me Shakespeare. Zeki Muller is a felon serving prison time for robbing a bank. He attends an academic class in prison where the inmates are provided different levels of education. On evaluating Zeki's knowledge, the teacher discovers that he is dumber than a middle schooler. She thinks he should be locked away from society because of his lack of general knowledge. But against her wish, Zeki is being released that day. He walks out of prison with a trashy phone and a few pennies to start a new life. But he is not worried at all. It turns out that he had stolen a million euros right before going to prison. His friend Zainab takes him to the place where she has buried the money and gives him the coordinates of the exact spot. To Zeki's surprise, a school's gymnasium has been built over his money. He is distressed but determined to get the money back. In the following scene, a gangster bangs Zeki's dead onto a table, asking for 2,000 euros worth of loan that he had borrowed before imprisonment. Zeki promises to get the money back in a few weeks and in turn asks for accommodation. The gangster owns a strip club and allows him to crash in one of the display rooms. That night, Zeki decides to get a job as a janitor in the school. That way, he can gain access to the gymnasium and can build a tunnel up to his money. The following day, he goes to the school for an interview and bumps into a teacher named Lisi. She has a cheerful personality, a trait that her students either love or hate. Zeki goes to the principal's office and sees a bunch of people waiting for a job interview. Although they are overly dressed for a janitor, Zeki doesn't think much of it. To get rid of the competition, he breaks the fire alarm, making everyone run away. When the principal comes outside, he tells her a student broke it accidentally. Zeki soon finds out that the principal thinks he is there to apply for the job of a substitute teacher. He tries explaining otherwise but she doesn't give him a chance. When Zeki finds out that the teachers get a spare key to the gym and a salary of 2000 euros, he cannot let the opportunity go. Now, the only problem is his academic qualifications that he needs to hand in the next day. Outside the school, Lisi is trying to stop a student who is smoking. Zeki helps her and asks her for a favor. He pretends to be interested in sharing the syllabus but in reality, wants to steal her academic certification to use it as his own. Later that day, they meet at her house and share an awkward conversation. When she is distracted, Zeki drugs her cup of tea that makes her pass out. Taking the opportunity, he searches the entire house for her academic certification and tries to print it. But just when he is in a hurry, the printer refuses to work. So instead, Zeki transfers the file to a flash drive. Lisi's friend Caro arrives home and is about to catch him in the act. Zeki makes it seem like he and Lisi are in bed together and covers up his plan. The following morning, they bump into each other at school but Zeki doesn't acknowledge what happened yesterday. Lisi is bothered because to her, they had gotten a bit too close than they should have. Zeki walks into the teacher's room right before a teacher jumps off the window. She had been so troubled by the students of her class that she decided to end her own life. Thankfully, she survives the fall and is taken to the hospital. But now, in her place, Lisi is assigned to class 10B. The students of the class are known as the devils in disguise. They play seemingly harmless pranks on the teachers and make their life a living hell. Suffice to say that Lisi is not too thrilled about the assignment. In his first class, Zeki orders the students to bring a VCD of their favorite movie every day for them to watch in his class. The one who chooses the best movie will get better grades. Zeki seems to be enjoying teaching but the same cannot be said for Lisi. The students laugh at every word she says and do not cooperate. When she picks up chalk, a slimy substance sticks it to her fingers. Then, as she tries to wash it off, the faucet breaks. She realizes the student had set up the prank and dries herself off with a towel, only to find out that it has been smothered with a black substance. Humiliated, she tries to leave but the door handle has dog feces stuck to it. After being utterly defeated by the monsters, she requests the principal to let her share the responsibility with someone. However, the principal asks her to leave if she cannot handle the pressure of being a teacher. That night, Zeki goes to the school's gym to start digging for his money. Meanwhile, at Lisi's home, her friend Caro fixes the printer that prints out Lisi's academic results. On looking up the details of the print, they figure out that it was done when Zeki was in the house and Lisi was passed out. Lisi suspects him of using her diploma to get the job. 
She drives to the and checks his files in the principal's office. On matching the results, she realizes that her suspicion is true. Minutes later, she bumps into Zeki and calls him out for using her diploma. He asks her to name her price but Lisi doesn't want any money, all she wants is to get rid of her duty as 10B's teacher. The next day, they request the principal to swap their duties. Zeki steps into the classroom and comes across a male genital drawn on the board. He tries to fetch something from the cupboard but accidentally sets his hands on mouse traps. As he retreats, a slimy black substance drops on him, and the students burst out laughing. Still, he tries continuing the class but is stuck to the chair in the process. The following day, Zeki arrives prepared with a paintball gun. Some students are outside skipping classes and refusing to come even when asked. He hits them with the gun and gathers them all in the class. He only wants them to stay quiet for his period and doesn't care if they study or not. When Lisi arrives to ask for chalk, she sees a student crying. She tells Zeki about it, to which he asks the student to cry silently. Lisi realizes that he isn't teaching them anything and is getting paid for just sitting there. That night, Zeki is kicked out of the strip club because of accommodation difficulties. With nowhere to go, he ends up at Lisi's home. Lisi and Karo mistake him for an intruder and beat him up before realizing who he actually is. He stays the night at the house with Lisi, Karo, and Lisi's younger sister Laura. The next morning, Zeki begs Lisi to let him stay at their house for two weeks. Initially, she doesn't want a fraud like him around them but then, she gets an idea. She agrees to let him stay but only if he actually teaches 10B and not just hangs around with them. Desperate for a place, Zeki accepts the offer. To help him teach, she gives him the reading material and the syllabus. Karo also advises him to control the class's leaders, Daniel and Chantel. If the leaders respect him, the others will automatically follow. Zeki reads the details about the leaders and finds out they are micro-criminals. Later that day, Lisi and Zeki go to the strip club to get dinner. Lisi tells him that Daniel of Class 10B wants to be a drug dealer in the future, which is the primary reason why he is uninterested in studying. With this information, Zeki might be able to help the students, even though he is not in the least interested in doing so. That night while digging through the gym, he finds a time capsule buried several years ago. On checking, he discovers Lisi's picture and a note inside. He laughs at her note where she wishes she weren't so fat. Eventually, he falls asleep on his desk. In the morning, the students take advantage of his unconsciousness and give him a makeover. Lisi helps him in the toilet because he feels sick. The care she shows for him is unlike anything Zeki has ever experienced. He slowly but surely starts falling for her. The following day, Zeki takes Class 10B to an educational tour to a dealer's house. Daniel witnesses what the life of an actual criminal looks like and decides to take a different career path. Zeki advises the students to join Lisi's theater class if they do not want to end up like the dealer. They do as told an audition for a Romeo and Juliet play. Daniel auditions for the role of Romeo and does great. However, Zeki thinks the drama is too boring. He and the students collectively rewrite the play and make a modern and entertaining version. A few more weeks go by in a similar fashion. Zeki continues digging the tunnel through the gymnasium. He and Lisi get along well and the students have started to study instead of creating trouble all the time. One day, the teacher's ratings given by the students are released on the internet. Lisi is disappointed because she doesn't get selected for any category. To most of the teachers, it is just a silly game but since Lisi wants her students to like her, she feels extremely down. To make her feel better, Zeki takes her and the students to a station where they vandalize a train. The students see the fun side of Lisi for the first time and start to respect her. They have to run away after almost being caught by the police but Lisi enjoys the night nonetheless. The next day, the students greet her in the hallway and politely agree to do everything she says. Then, they go on a field trip to a farm for a project. The children are playing around when they accidentally hit her with a sex hormone that makes her high. At the end of the day, Zeki has to carry her home and calm her hormones down. Her younger sister Laura is worried because the people from child services are going to be there any minute. If they see Lisi in such a condition, they might reconsider letting Laura live with her. When Lisi wakes up a while later, she sees Zeki and Laura talking to the person from child services. 
Zeki pretends to be her caring boyfriend and kisses her as an act. After the official leaves, Lisi asks him what he wants in turn for the favor. To her surprise, he replies that he did it for Laura. That evening, Zeki finally finds the money that he had been looking for. He goes through a roller coaster of emotions and starts crying tears of happiness. He then goes to the strip club and pays off his debts. When asked where he wants to go now, Zeki claims he has started to like his new life. On the day of the modern Romeo and Juliet play, everyone is nervous. At the end of the day, the play is a hit and gets second place in the competition. The students are overjoyed because this is the first thing they did as a group that was successful. The following day at gym class, a student performs a high jump and accidentally reveals the tunnel under the gymnasium. When Lisi goes down to check, she overhears Zeki on the other side talking to someone on the phone. He reveals everything about his true intentions of coming to school. Lisi feels betrayed and used by him. She also learns about his past as a criminal and threatens to call the police if he does not leave his job and her home immediately. With no way to convince her otherwise, Zeki agrees to go away. The next day is the big test that the students have been preparing for a long time. Before it starts, they bring out different pictures and stare at them. On being asked they reveal that Zeki had advised them to bring a picture of what they love the most to keep them motivated. A student informs Lisi that Zeki's motivation photo is in his drawer. Curious, she checks it and finds a picture of herself that he had found in the time capsule. Just then, Zainab arrives with a letter that Zeki left for Lisi. The letter says that he is sorry for breaking her trust. He also explains that he had decided to start a new life as a teacher even after getting the money. Zainab adds that Zeki is on his way to rob a bank with a bad influence. If Lisi doesn't stop him, he might enter the crime world again. Lisi immediately tries calling him but the call goes straight to voicemail. She gets an idea to use a science project to communicate with him. With the help of the students, the plan works but Zeki's crime partner breaks the project. At last, Zeki realizes he wants to continue living his life as a teacher and ditches the plan. Following that, he goes home with a gift for Lisi and asks her to be his prom date. She opens the box and finds a beautiful dress inside. They meet at the end of the stairs and kiss. At school, the principal cries while checking 10 V's test papers. The progress they have shown is exemplary and all credit goes to Zeki. She wants him to stay as a permanent teacher but Zeki comes clean and tells her he isn't qualified. The principal doesn't seem to care. She forges a high school diploma for him and allows him to stay. At last, the couple joins everyone at the prom and enjoys it. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.